Hello, my name's Simon Crafer. We're in France at Le Mans circuit in the MotoGP paddock, as you can see. And it's time for this week's Tech Talk, which is about a subject we've already covered before. But last time we covered rare ride height devices, it was what they did. This time it's to uh, clear up some confusion. It's how they work. So, um, I've uh, read and heard people say it squashes the rear shock with like high pressure gas, you know. This is a spring out of most of the bikes in the paddock and uh, 95 Newton meters takes around 10 kilograms pressure to move it one millimeter. So, I mean, I could stand on it and you'd barely notice the, how much it moves. So engineers are far too clever to waste energy um, you know, meaning that if you'd have to tow a trailer with a compressor on it to for the whole race distance to be able to compress that the the amount that these move which is like range between 20 and 35 40 something like that millimeters the rear so they don't squash the rear shock what they do is let's I've done a little diagram here that's the chassis the seat subframe here the rear shock and the swing arm here and see the the connecting rod that's running it's a, like a connecting link or rod or it goes from the swing arm to the rear linkage and that rear linkage when the rod swing arm goes up pulls that compresses the rear shock that's your suspension on most motorcycles and including a MotoGP so this connecting rod here they take that out and put in the rear ride height device. It's called that by all the riders and engineers because it adjusts the rear ride height and it's a device. So that slots in here in this and when the the motorcycle has the rider's weight on it and is accelerating there's a lot of force there. So when the rider decides to pull that lever it might be a thumb or a uh, Fabio's got a little finger looking clutch lever here you know when they pull that, it allows this device, which is very similar technology, very similar, used slightly different, very similar technology to a rear shock. Smaller, but same thing. Uh, gas pressure, oil, really, really similar. And that slots in here. When they pull that, it allows it to lengthen. I've put a little bit, so that rod can slide in and out, much like a rear shock, which lengthens this rod and just allows the rear to move up. But it must do it in a controlled way, that they don't want it just to fall. So, so it's adjustable like a rear shock, same technology. Gas, uh, oil under pressure from gas, adjustable uh, both ways, like a rear shock, compression or you know, rebound. And the, the, the difference is from a rear shock is the rear shock already stays long and comp compress. This stays short, and when they pull the lever, it can lengthen, you know? But the lengthening is really done by the weight and the force under acceleration, you know? So clever engineers using some force that's already there. Then when the rider brakes, let me explain. So I'll sit in uh, pit lane and watch the, the engineers, uh, the guys warming up the bikes, you know, the mechanics warming up the bikes. And when they test this, the engine's running, they pull the lever, before they pull the lever, the bike's solid, like all bikes, you know, trying to compress the spring. When they pull the lever, they can easily pull it, push it down, and then they need to grab it. It, it's, it kind of sits there because the gas pressure, which can be adjusted as well, because how much they want it to go up and re-engage. But they normally have to grab the bike and pull it up the last part to get it to engage, you know, this device. So it's all adjustable because they need it to get to the end of the straight when they're braking and engage because they don't want to go into the corner and it collapse again. So that's why the gas pressure in there, maybe even in two stages they can adjust it. The gas pressure in there helps it to come back and engage. So without further ado, <laughs> I, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, rough explanation on how rear ride height devices work. See you in Mugello for the next TikTok.